Hey, it's Diana of Cauldron and Craft. In my last cooking video, which was Cole Cannon, I mentioned that I made a huge batch because I was going to save some of it to use for a future recipe. Well, that recipe is shepherd's pie. And it's probably not true shepherd's pie because I'm going to use ground beef instead of lamb and I'm going to use cold cannon instead of regular mashed potatoes. So you might say, Diana, this is an abomination and it's not shepherd's pie at all. However, I'm going to call it that and I want, because I want to use up the leftover cold cannon and I want to see what it tastes like with those flavors together. And I think it's just a perfect hearty meal that you can make in bulk for these cool fall days. And I want to share that with you. So let's get started. We're going to start off by dicing a yellow onion. Uh, I used a whole yellow onion in this recipe, and you can also go ahead and dice your garlic for later. diced our onions and now they're cooking. I'm going to let them cook for a few minutes and then I'm going to add the ground beef in with the onions. And I want to talk a little bit more about the ground beef versus lamb. I've heard ground shepherd's pie made with ground beef called cowboy pie. So if you want to call it that, go right ahead. And also to further my case of using leftover cold cannon or any leftover mashed potatoes, for shepherd's pie. I'm sure tons of people know this and already do this, but it's just something that I've thought about because every time I've made shepherd's pie, I think I've made mashed potatoes from scratch to make it. Like I wanted shepherd's pie, didn't have mashed potatoes on hand, so I made them. And that's a lot of work and that's probably why I don't eat them as often. So um, that's just another point on the case of using leftover cold cannon because I have it. Um, and then the other thing is, I'm using a pot to make my mixture, and then I'm gonna use a pan to actually bake it in the oven. I know a lot of people will use their cast iron skillet, so like I could use this, my 12 inch cast iron skillet, but I don't like you putting tomato based things in my cast iron, even though I feel like it's pretty well seasoned, I just don't like doing it. Um, but if you have a cast iron skillet, it's a perfect use for it to make all your mixture, put the mashed potatoes on top, throw it in the oven, then you basically have a one pot, one pan mess to clean up later. So I may try that in the future, but just not today. So now while I wait for the onions and I'm about to add the ground beef, I'm gonna go ahead and dice up my garlic. sirloin that I'm using. Um, preferable to use a lean meat just because you, we don't want there to be a lot of fat to drain away. Also the garlic powder, black pepper, and onion powder that I added is just a me thing. Like that's not part of the official recipe. Um, I just like using that when I make ground beef. Also I recognize that the cost of meat is rising dramatically and this would be a really good recipe to add to substitute either part or all of the meat with something like lentils and mushrooms it would substitute beautifully in this recipe so if you are trying to eat less meat or don't eat meat at all really good way to substitute would be lentils and mushrooms now we're ready to add our garlic rosemary and thyme Rosemary and thyme are a dynamic duo of aromatic warming herbs that make this such a comfort food. I'm also going to add a half teaspoon of salt. This is another one of those 
times I wish you could smell through the screen because the garlic, rosemary, and thyme just smells amazing. Next, I'm going to add a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Hopefully, I have enough. Oh, look at that. Now, I'm going to add my two tablespoons of flour. This is going to help the, this is going to help the mixture thicken up. Next we have two tablespoons of tomato paste. Now we're going to cook the mixture for a couple minutes to cook the flour all the way through so that when we add the broth it will thicken up properly and not get lumpy. So the recipe I'm using calls for like a mixed peas and carrots mixture and then also corn. I'm going to use what I have, which is this peas, carrots, green beans, and corn mixture. Um, same that I use in my soup just because this is what I already have and so I'm going to use that. And the total amount of frozen vegetables is a cup and a half in the recipe so that's what I'm going to add of this. simmer for about five minutes just to make sure the um, frozen vegetables are not frozen anymore and while that's working I'm going to prepare my baking dish. Now you're going to spread your mashed potatoes evenly across the top. Like I said before these were leftovers but I did heat them up so they'd be easier to spread and you want to make sure you seal the entire top so make sure there's no gaps around the edges where the mixture could easily boil over. All right, it's not beautiful. However, I have faith that this is going to be delicious. So we're gonna put this in a 400 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes. And I am actually gonna put this on a baking sheet because it's completely full. So I wanna make sure that if it boils over, it doesn't make a mess in the oven. shepherd's pie made with leftover cold cannon, a amalgamation of different things. So as I talked about in my cold cannon video, I kept harping on the butteriness of the potatoes with the cabbage and the leeks. And that translates into this dish, so it adds a sweetness that normally wouldn't be there for mashed potatoes. So I'm really happy with how this turned out, and I'll definitely make it again. And 
Let me know if you try it or what your favorite shepherd's pie recipe is. I'd love to hear in the comments. See you next time. Bye.